Hello there. Let's continue our conversation on Stoicism, going over the moral letters by Lucius Aeneas Seneca. Um, I can't... Okay. I, I can't find anything. Where was I? Here. Here. Okay. I don't care that I lost track, because I'm Stoic. Now, uh, I have spoken about letter 83... Uh, and we talked about doing the right thing even when no one is watching. And I thought what we would do today is actually continue on letter 83 because I think there's more into in it. Some, some stuff that I think is very interesting uh, from the perspective of Stoicism. Because this deals with something that Seneca was fairly well known for. So... But would you like to know the outcome of our race today? Something that rarely happens in running, a tie. After this flurry of activity, one can hardly call it a workout, I got down into the, a cold bath. For cold is the word I use when the water is just barely warm. And I used to be such a cold water enthusiast. On the 1st of January, I used to pay my respects to the canal. Just as I used to read or write or say something on that day, so also was it a ritual of mine to greet the new year with a dip and the maiden. But then I moved my encampment, first to the Tiber, now to this tub, where, when I am at my bravest and all indications are good, the water is warmed only by the sun. I can hardly manage a cold bath any more. Next, it is dry bread, a meal without a table, after which I need not wash my hands, I sleep hardly at all. You know my habits. I take just a very brief nap, a mule team's rest, as it were. It's enough for me if I doze off for a moment. Sometimes I know I have slept, and sometimes I only guess. Now, um, I think the interesting thing here is, it's a very, very short phrase, really, but, but the, what, what Seneca is talking about with taking this cold bath is fascinating. He describes this at a couple of different moments in his letters, that he would do these sorts of things, um, take a cold bath, or sleep on a very rudimentary hard cot, or only eat dry bread for a day. And that made me think about those kinds of practices, doing something where you kind of take something away from yourself, where you you don't give yourself a certain thing. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that is quite common. A lot of, lot of religions do it, right? Fasting is, is, a, is a common practice in, in a number of religions. I have, I have done it myself. And, and I, one of the things that I found very interesting about the practice is that I, I have to be honest, it didn't really give me any religious feelings or or didn't really evoke any 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 religiosity in me but the interesting thing was it does make you focus on how nice it is to have what you typically have so two things i really noticed in in going through those those kinds of fasting um, um, procedures one is you can handle a lot more than you think you can so when you think it is impossible to go without food for a day, it's really not. If you think it's impossible to, to uh, not drink any water for, for an extended period of time, you think it's not possible, it actually is. So the, the first realization there is you can actually do those things. You can actually not eat for an entire day. Intermittent fasting is very hot right now, right? But, but I mean, that is actually possible. But more interesting than that, I think, is... And that's kind of why I wanted to, to talk about this today, is this approach from a Stoic viewpoint. Because a Stoic would say, ah, but this is actually a really good practice. And the reason it's really good practice is that what if there comes a time where you cannot afford to eat three meals a day, where you cannot drink whatever you want to drink? What if there comes a time when luxury is not within reach? When you can't have your, you know, your cozy bed and your hot shower, and your, what if you can't have these things? And Seneca incorporated this 
as a stoic practice in his daily life once every while and remember basically Seneca was a millionaire so things are a little easier for him than they are for most people or were a little easier for him but having said that the basic practice is a very interesting one he practiced for what if that day comes what if at some point I can no longer have all these riches what if I can't avail myself of all these luxuries and he did it again and again. He describes it again and again. He does this. He keeps training himself. He'd only dry bread for a day. Well, do it. Try it once. See what happens. And that way you, you practice for hopefully you will never need this, but maybe one day you do need that. And then you have actually practiced that skill. You have actually done that thing. And you may find that if that day comes, it's easier for you to do it because you've already accustomed yourself once in a while to only eat the bare minimum or to sleep on, on the floor, or sleep on a hard, you know, hard surface, whatever. And I think it's a very interesting approach because it makes you aware of you can handle more than you think you can handle. But there's a second benefit as well. And that benefit I found to be that when you then do allow yourself to eat something or drink something or take a hot shower instead of a cold one or sleep in a nice bed instead of some on, like on the floor or something, is that you appreciate that kind of stuff so much more. That you can actually go out and, and, and eat whatever you want or drink whatever you want or have it whenever you want it. It makes you appreciate those kinds of things more. And I think that is a secondary benefit that you, all the things that you take for granted, in the West we take a lot for granted. If if I if I want to drink water, I can I can walk to any tap and I can I can I can fill up a glass with water and I can drink it and that water is clean and cool and I I, I don't have to worry about getting sick. That's a tremendous luxury and you become a lot more appreciative of that if you deny yourself that kind of stuff once in a while. Same thing with food. Let's, let's be fair, think of, of all the options you have, foods you can eat, you can go to the supermarket, you can, you can pick from basically 50 different kinds of pizza, uh, you, 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 all the kind of things you can eat, you have access to, but you take that for granted because you always have access to that. I remember at the start of the, the pandemic that I, I, that was at a point where everybody thought, oh, it's not, it's not much, is it? I remember going to the supermarket and for the first time in my life I saw completely empty shelves. All the pasta was gone. All the flour was gone. Almost all the canned goods were gone. I got a little startled. I got a little startled because I had never, where I have grown up, where I live now, I had never seen empty supermarket shelves. But for some people, for some people that is a daily reality, right? And I'm not trying to turn this into some sort of tear-jerking video, but, but it's something to think about, to be appreciative of. But also, again, to practice for what if one day I don't have access to any of these things, right? It's very important. So I think there are many benefits, mental benefits, physical benefits maybe. I'm not talking about intermittent fasting or what it does, but it's all, no, it doesn't matter. But the mental benefit is great. And you steal yourself physically and mentally for what if that day comes. It's a great practice. Not only because it prepares you for something that hopefully will not come but might come one day, but also because it shows you that you can handle a lot more than you think. And finally, because it makes you appreciate what you have so much more. And I think that is of incredible value. And again, this is a very stoic practice, right? Once in a while, not every day, once in a while, do something like that. Deny yourself a certain thing that you know you typically have access to. Just do it. See what happens. I know I, I, I based this entire video on basically one or two sentences in that letter, but, but I, I think it's an interesting topic to think about. So, sorry, I said think twice. Let me know what you think. Um... If there's something you do, you have experience with this, how you experience it and, and, and whether you find it a useful practice, even as a mental, just thinking about doing that, right? That's for some people, it's already a, a big step, but I'm very interested to, to read that. So, so let me know. And, um, 
I'll be back again soon for more talk about Stoicism and Seneca. Thanks for watching. Bye.